Uh, inquiry into the National Road Safety Strategy Implementation Plan. Have we got someone who can talk about that? Aha. Jessica Hall. Okay. So, Mr. Foles, uh, on the 18th of February, the Executive Director of Transport Policy Division gave a commitment to this committee in relation to the implementation of the 12 recommendations, and I'll use his words. The aim is to have both the implementation plan and the governance review at the Council of Australian Government's Transport Infrastructure Council at its first meeting this year. So we're talking 18th February. Now, the governance review, um, was that presented to the Transport Infrastructure Council? Yes, it was, Senator. Was the implementation plan presented? Uh, Senator, it was as a draft. Um, we, we'd been working with the states and territories um, on that, and so um, a, a draft implementation plan was considered by the council. So it wasn't presented? A draft implementation plan that had been um, worked up in agreement with the states and territories was presented to the council for consideration. Okay, so a governance review was presented and a draft implementation plan. So, is it possible to get a look at the uh, governance review and the uh, draft implementation? Um, the governance review is a public document and is available yeah, on the so website. We're happy to send a link to the, yeah, the no, committee. Yeah, I agree with that. But what about the implementation plan? What's um, that's the... still, as it was a draft, so it's still being worked through with the, with the states and territories. Um, this is road safety. What's the secret? Um, sorry, Senator, we are we're working very closely with the states and territories, taking into account the issues that were raised by um, the Jeremy Woolley and um, John Crozier in... That's not what the Governor's Review said. It said you weren't taking strong national leadership. Are you trying to say you are now? Um, the point of setting up the Office of Road Safety within the department is, is, was, a, was a key response to that finding. Um, you've asked me specifically about the implementation review. Um, what, I don't have a final document that I can release. Okay, so the, uh, the key finding of the government's review was that there'd been an absence of federal leadership in road safety. That, would, that was a key finding, yes, Senator. Okay. And you've got a draft implementation plan, which is not publicly available to anyone outside of the um, industry council, is it? Sorry, Senator, we have been doing a lot of work with the states and territories on road safety. Um, the, many of the issues that were identified by the, in the implementation plan actions are um, going forward either through um, decisions that were taken at the council meeting in um, August or work that we're doing with the states and territories um, through the starting to work on the new strategy that um, uh, council is committed to um, considering. All right, I'm gonna move on to a question, so. Can I oh. just ask a question directly relevant to, to that review? And Can I um, stop you? <laughs> I'm just Probably rather, not. rather than chopping and changing and going from topic to topic while we're on topic, I, I just want to know um, one of the recommendations from the review was to establish the Office of Road Safety. I understand the implementation plan is still a, a dark horse, but <coughs> but some things have happened. So the Office of Road Safety has been established. That was a recommendation. Mm. Yes, we are going to go do that. And and how many other recommendations of that inquiry are underway or already complete, even though we haven't seen the implementation plan? Uh, so all actions, all um, recommendations are underway. Um, a number of them have been completed already. Um, but they include, just bear with me for a second, Senator. Um, uh, recommendation one has been completed, which is create a strong national leadership by appointing a cabinet minister with specific specific multi-agency responsibility. Um, recommendation two, establish a national road safety entity, uh, which is obviously the Office of Road Safety has been completed. Um, recommendation six has been completed, which is undertake a national road safety governance review. Um, uh, uh, um, all the others are currently um, underway. So it is fair to say that it, despite the fact that we're still negotiating the final implementation plan with the states and territories, 
work is underway and at a federal level what we can do we are getting on with the job. Yeah, that's correct, Senator. And I should also mention that I think there was a recommendation 11 resource key road safety enablers and road safety innovation initiatives that was also completed that was announced in budget this year. Does the defence rest? I do. All yours. Okay. So <laughs> no, at the estimates rest. hearing of the 18th of February, the Deputy Secretary Pip Spence and the Acting General Manager of Road Safety Task Force, Ms Sue Tucker, both assured the committee that inquiry chairs Professor Woolley and Dr Crozer were among the experts consulted by the task force to address the inquiry's 12 recommendations. Ms Tucker, as it was very clear, we have met with them a couple of times to talk through the inquiry and understand the intent of recommendations. Ms Spence, you were also clear, we're engaging with Dr Crozer and Mr Woolley, who, have a great deal, who we have a great deal of respect for to make sure the direction they are going is in accordance with their views expressed in the inquiry report. Now, this is the inquiry into the National Road Safety Strategy, lack of... So, between the reports being handed down in September last year and um, the assurances of Ms Tucker and Ms Spence, on what dates did the department meet with Dr Crozier and Professor Woolley? Um, Senator, I'd have to take on notice of the specific dates that we met with them, but um, I'm, yeah, I'd have to take it, but I've spoken to... You did meet with them, though? Oh, I've met multiple occasions with both um, Jeremy Woolley and John Crozier. On this, these, after this particular report? Um, I, have, I, have, I have met with them to discuss um, their, their report. I'd have to take on notice. It would have been um, Sue and the team who had specific conversations around in the lead up to the Transport and Infrastructure Council meeting in August. So we're very clear here. We want to know what dates did the department meet with Dr Crozer and Professor Woolley, whether it's in person or by phone, and who the departmental representatives were attending those meetings. Thanks, Senator. We'll take that on notice. And. Um, you don't want to withdraw the earlier comments about meeting with them because we've been told you didn't meet with them. I've met with both of them on numerous occasions. Subsequent to the presentation of that report. Is that your evidence? That I've met with both Jeremy Woolley and After John Crozier subsequent the to them providing the report. Yes, Senator. Okay. But you just can't remember when? I just can't give you the specific dates. No, Was I'm it sorry. Once, twice? Um, I, I can think of at least two occasions that I've met um, okay. with with Jeremy and the same with um, Mr. Dr. Crozier. Crozier. Dr. Crozier. Together? Uh, not together, no, Senator. Mm -hmm. well, uh, sorry, Mr. Spence, I went on gobsmack because I saw a video with uh, Dr. Crozier, and I've spoken with Dr. Crozier and Professor Woolley. I spoke with Professor Woolley at the, road, that's not the uh, College of Road Safety uh, National Conference in Adelaide a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it has said very clearly that there's been no consultation over the, over the recommend or the report at all. Um, so has your meetings been about something else? Or? Um, I'm surprised to hear that, Senator. Not um, as surprised as I am. Yeah, because I, my view is we have discussed with them what we're doing in response to the inquiry. I was at the same conference, I was on the same panel as Jeremy, um, where he talked about the engagement that we've had with them on what's going forward to the Transport and Infrastructure Council. So, as said, just we'll have to take on notice the specific details. So, so sorry, have the conversations been on the recommendations of the report as well? Have they been involved? And of course, there's Lachlan, uh, 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 Lachlan McIntosh and Rob McInerney, who I should also yeah. acknowledge their fine work as well. Has there been discussions around the recommendations or bringing them into the tent to talk about how that can be achieved? With Miss Hall saying that. I thought you said all of them are underway, all, all the recommendations. Did you say that? All of the recommendations are being... So the three billion dollar spend as well, that's underway? Uh, the three billion dollars in regards to the infrastructure investment, the government is already spending... Sorry, I've digressed. I just want to come yeah. back to Ms oh, Spence want, because I'm shocked. Oh, but you, you I'm keen to see where the three dollar, three billion dollar spend that you've committed to. So the, um, we can table some information for you, Senator, in regards to the um, what is expended currently on infrastructure. We'll come back. To, we can come back to these recommendations, but I just I, I'm yeah. just very keen because that's clearly what has been told to, to me. So, Ms. Spence, you've taken the exact dates on notice. Uh, is there no one in the room or in the adjoining room who would be able to shed some light on this uh, this question? No, I'm sorry, Senator. We. We have taken it on notice, and um, as I said, I, I have met with both 
John and Jeremy, um, we have discussed the way we're taking the inquiry forward into the Transport and Infrastructure Council, and I'll get back to you with specific information on meetings that the department has held with both of them, okay. subsequent to them providing the inquiry <coughs> report. Um, so the video that uh, Senator um, Stills uh, has commented on, are you aware of it? Yes, Senator, I have seen that video. And um, what was the result, what was the department's reaction to that video? Uh, Which is, you know, basically a public plea from the co-chairs. Um, subsequent to when that video um, was released, there has been um, the discussion at the Transport and Infrastructure Council and the impression that I'd been left with is while um, the authors feel that we probably haven't gone as far as they would like, they did, they did say, they did, they have indicated to me that they at least saw that there were some positive steps um, that the federal government was taking. So while I think their preference would be all their, you know, they, their recommendations stand as they are, but they did feel like the Commonwealth was at least, at least engaging in a space where perhaps we hadn't previously. Well, I've uh, met uh, Mr Crozier uh, subsequently and I'm not sure that he would share your assertion that uh, the Commonwealth's going along in a very positive manner. Oh, sorry, Senator. Anyway, that's up, that's, that, you're taking that on notice. You're going to come back with some dates and, and we're going to get that all uh, sorted out. Now, the Office of Road Safety. Have we got a um, got a structure there? I mean, do we know what's happening there? I mean, I've had some industry feedback that the. Uh, have you got a CEO yet? Uh, no, we're close to finalising that appointment. CEO. So uh, you have a structure though. There's so many SES. There's a there's a branch that's now been established established within the Surface Transport Policy Division. Um, so it's clearly identified on, in our organisation chart and we have um, a recruitment process underway um, and very close to completion for the head of the Office of Road Safety. Have you had industry feedback that the structure is probably not likely to work all that well given that the CEO is four, four levels down from, the, from a decision maker? Has anybody told you that? Um. I mean, the Office of national road safety would need to interact with, I presume, people all around the country. And if his level is below the people he's interacting with, it may not be all that successful. Has anybody told you that? Um, most of the people that, no one has said that specifically to me. They may have raised it with other members of the department. Um, well, perhaps on notice if you could give us some feedback about industry assessment of the structure of the office, because I've had criticism put to me is that uh, A, that no suitably qualified person in the private sector would apply for it because it lacks a clear decision making role and they think it's doomed to fail because it's too far down the ladder of decision making in the department. That's pretty straightforward feedback. I'm sure you'd have had the same. <clears throat> Genuinely, Senator, no one has put it to me would in Mr. those Would Mr Kennedy terms? have had the same? Sorry, just let her finish, please. She did. No, she hadn't no, finished she her didn't. answer. Please well, let her I understood her answer perfectly. <laughs> okay, well, I was running out of time here. <laughs> so, what about Mr. Kennedy? Did he have that feedback before he departed for greener pastures? Uh, Senator, I'm not aware of anyone raising that with is, Dr. Is, Kennedy. Is it possible to take <coughs> that on notice? We can check. We can see what correspondence Dr. Kennedy received prior to leaving the organisation. So, the um, the governance review. Do you have the uh, tender cost for that? Does $430,000 sound about right? I'd have to take that on notice, Senator. You don't know what the governance review cost? Uh, I'm sorry, Senator. The governance review was undertaken before I started in this role, so I'll just have to go back and double check. And, and was there payments made to the two expert witnesses of $30,000? Sorry, can I come back? Sorry, Senator. I've got it here on Tender. It's here on Tender. If you want to click it on, I can give you a number. We've got a couple of minutes. We should have a talk about it. If it's on Oztender, <laughs> Senator, we accept that that's the, the cost of it. We okay. just don't have it in right. front of well, us. Well, going to Senator Gallagher's uh, questioning there, there's uh, a payment here for three months' work from the 26th of February 2009 into the 31st of May uh, to uh, Ernst and Young. Are you aware of that payment? Yes, Senator. So you tell us, I know how much it is here. Do you know how much it was? Can you remember? No, I can't. Sorry, Senator. 
$540,422.10. So what I'm going to just lead to, Senator Gale, if you don't mind, can you tell us how much Dr Crozier and Professor Woolley were paid for their fine work that you can't wait to pick up all the recommendations? How much were they paid? Please don't tell me you don't have it there. I mean, Senate estimates, you know, really clearly is you need to come here. You're not silly people. We've seen it over the years. We, we might not have liked your answers, but you had them. But now, please don't tell me there's no one here that can tell us. You've got that information there somewhere. I'm, I'm sorry, Senator. I'm hoping if there's anyone in the back room who has that information, they'll come forward. Given the, um, the report was provided some time ago. Um, I have not got it in my notes in front of me. OK, someone in the background. Hello. Hello. You're listening out there or they will go on home? Um, oh, Senator. this, you know, seriously, you wonder why we're so frustrated. They shouldn't have gone home. Yeah. They shouldn't have gone home. No, we we'll just get so frustrated. We are asking very simple questions that we are allowed to ask about government expenditure, ladies and gentlemen. We're not asking you for matters of opinion or hypotheticals. This is taxpayers' dollars that you are in control of. So you now remember the $540,442 payment and 10 cents to Ernst & Young. So while we're waiting for someone to come in here very quickly, because, um, well, Senator Gallagher, I interrupt you, but I'm very keen to know about two other payments that were made as well. So, so if we can just get this in perspective, you have Professor Woolley, a renowned expert in road safety. Yep. You have John Crozier, I think the president John of the Crozier, Australasian yep. College Australian of Story Surgeons, two weeks ago. an absolute outstanding individual in the community. And you have Lachlan McIntosh, all charged by the minister to do a job. Yep. And they done it on a, on a shoestring when I hear the figures quoted about the governor's review. Because my understanding is they did it for travel and a modest, modest uh, reimbursement. That's my recollection as well, Senator. And, and the result of their work is that we spent how much? 540000 Yeah. On a governor's review. No, we spent more. That's one. That's Ernst and Young. That's Ernst and Young. Mm. So it could be in the order of seven or 800000 Well, we want to If find someone out. had the figures. But we know 540,000. I don't think you spend 20% of that on, on the three eminent well, experts. Well, let's find out. Someone's going to be here to give us the answer, Senator Gallagher, so we know exactly. Someone knows, and they're in this building. So, so what the industry's looking and saying to interested parties in road safety is they're at it again. They're going to do this huge bloody inquiry, and expending huge amounts of taxpayers' dollars to discover what they already know. There hasn't been a great deal of leadership in the federal uh, sphere for a decade. So I'm not excluding us. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I don't care. In terms of road safety, I'm completely agnostic. I don't care who's in power. We should be doing much better. We get these genuine, committed individuals who have made their life passion road safety. They do a job, and your answer is to go and spend 500000 plus with Ernst and Young and others, re-examining the entrails of what we already know. Oh, sorry, Senator. I mean, it was responding to one of their recommendations to undertake the governance review. We okay. were responding to one of their recommendations in doing that piece of work. OK. But, but I want to know how much... So, please, Ms Spence, how much did Professor Woolley, Dr Crozier, Mr McIntosh and Mr McInerney get paid to do that report individually? Senator, I've got... Staff behind me trying to find okay, an answer. Right. I cannot can guarantee I, I can find it right. for you tonight, no, but we are trying. That's great. Can I, Senator Gallagher, can I just follow on Yes, here? yes. Certainly. I'm still on the um, Aus tendon, the contract notice for you is CN 358 4933. Now, there's another one here peer review for road safety governance. And the reason for the consultancy is need for independent research or assessment. So, someone's going to be, I assume, Checking if Dr Crozier and Professor Woolley weren't bulldusting to us or something like that, is that right? No, no, Senator. There was a um, okay. there was a strong cons well, there was a concern that was um, articulated to us by some of the states and territories and some of the other stakeholders <coughs> that the Australian government doing the governance review would mean that it wasn't a um, a transparent process, and they were concerned that it would be a whitewash. Um, I suppose for one of other words, um, and so right. as a result, we. Um, also contracted to P 
independent peer, yep. two, two independent experts yeah, to undertake a peer review of the governance review and their report was included, it was published as part of the governance review. Okay, and it all ticked off tickety-boo that Professor Woolley and... It wasn't around Professor Woolley or um, Dr Crozier's work, it was around the governance review that was subsequently okay. commissioned by EY and prepared by EY. So may I ask then, okay, so for the 12th of March 2019 to the 28th of June, three months, there was a contract value in Australian dollars of $30,000. So I looked down and I thought, who's this going to? And it says, Jeannie or Jean Breen Consulting, yes. Rose Cottage, Buckton, Skipton in England. Yes. So what's that all about? Can She's, you help me out? Uh, yes, and it'll, um, I don't have her CV in front of me, but she is actually considered to be a road safe, international road safety expert mm. who um, is well respected across the industry and hence mm -hmm. she was identified as an appropriate person to okay. undertake a peer review. Okay, no worries. And we've got another one and I'm just going to get my magic finger out. No, just bear with me. Be careful. And I'll go to, it's unloaded. I'll go to the <laughs> next one here so you can, there's another one. Uh, Safe Systems Solutions Proprietary Limited probably the same time amount, 12th of March to the 28th of June, 24,200. So Again, that who's was, that and what's that, that about? The, that was the second peer review. Yeah, um, no, I'm aware of that. Dave, Dave Shelton. Who, uh, Dave Shelton, yeah, sorry, yeah. you didn't say that, I no. missed that out. We'll and again, he's here. got a um, Australian-based, um, strong experience in the in the area, and um, okay. So he for was the, a respected independent. Sure. So for the for the for the time remaining, they both came back and said, "We're happy that the government the government's taken this uh, review seriously, and you're not going to whitewash it." So what did it actually, what did it involve them doing? Uh, it involved them doing an initial review of the draft governance review, and then providing advice that was. Now, sorry, the draft governance the review. The draft governance review that EY um, and the department prepared. So, so these mob were checking up on EY, were they? EY and, and the um, department. Right. And obviously it's just desktop because you're not going to come out from England? Or do you come out no, from we England? sent them the draft report and they provided um, comments on whether they felt it was um, addressing the terms of reference um, and adequately addressing the issues that um, had been, been raised, including through the inquiry report. And right. then the report was updated and was sent to them for final review and their comments on the governance review were included in the report that was now publicly available. Okay. Is, is that normal to get a draft report and then peer review it? Um, as, a, as I said, Senator, there was some concern that it wouldn't be, um, I think, probably reflecting the concerns about um, the way the Australian government has, has um, uh, our, our role in road safety, there was just a strong a strong view from the states and territories and some of the other key stakeholders. Um, so no, it's not normal process, but we felt it was appropriate in the circumstances. So have you ever done that before? You've taken a, a draft report and then what, did, what were you looking for? I mean, it's a report. What, it, did you ask for a draft report and then you were going to revise it or something? <coughs> We asked for a draft report. We wanted to make sure that there was credibility in what was provided. We, we didn't think that it was really sufficient for this. What are you paying the money for then if you're not going to get credibility? Um, Senator, you pay someone $400,000, I'm sure they're going to give you a credible, credible oh, report. Are they not? Senator, we were confident that we'd get a good report from EY, but we weren't the only audience for this, and so we wanted to give everyone as much comfort that they could, that the Australian government was taking the recommendations of Professor Woolley and Dr Crozier seriously. And it is unusual to do this. Um, I'd have, I'm not, a, I haven't been involved in a process where we've had an independent peer review of a draft report prepared. Okay, by, yeah. so I've got very little time and I've got six questions and if you and don't know. How much Jeremy and John will pay? Yeah, well they're going to do that. Uh, we're still, I, I've got somebody. Well they're going to come and interrupt us when they get that. So who received the draft report on what date? Is that an on notice question? Uh, that's on notice, Senator. Uh, was the department able to, to respond to the draft findings or draft content? Were Sorry, you Senator? responding to that or was it just the peer reviewers? Um, I don't understand your question, I'm sorry. Was Senator. the department able to respond to the draft findings or the draft content? Um, we were able to work with EY to respond to the comments that so we you received from the, the peer report. review. Yes. By paying the money, you could actually say, oh, look, we don't think that draft finding is good. It, 
We could, uh, we could ask the um, EY and the work that we were doing within the department um, to expand upon um, the issues that had been raised in response to what the peer reviewer said. Could you tell us on notice what the draft findings were that the department needed to respond to? Um, I'd have to take that on notice, Senator. Who signed off on the department's feedback? Was that you, Ms Spence? Um, I'm, again, I'm... I'm not quite sure what you mean by the department's feedback. I, I understand that there was the independent peer review feedback that was, was provided to us and working with EY to update the, the governance review before it was finalised. OK, so you, you purchased feedback by way of two tenders and you had an opportunity to talk about the draft findings I'm asking yep. very clearly, who signed off on that feedback? Um, Senator, I think that probably would have been done um, by the either the executive director or the, the head of the... Well, um, perhaps you'd better take I'll it take on notice, on notice. So I'm you sorry, Senator. mislead the committee and just tell us who signed off on it. Can this committee get a copy of the department's response to the draft findings or draft content? Did you have a formal document? Um, Senator, I'm really... The, the process that we went through and your questions, I'm just struggling to um, align them because we, we worked with EY to prepare the draft governance review that was then submitted to the independent peer reviews who provide us with feedback, which we then, we then incorporated into the final review, which was then provided back to the peer reviewers for their feedback. So I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be cutie, but I'm just genuinely not sure what well, you, you mean you've, by... You've said yourself that it's unusual for this form mm. of activity to take place. So you've, you've paid for a review. It's come in a draft form. You have the opportunity to influence the draft form <coughs> and you also have peer reviewing it now. Yeah. All I'm saying is we want to know the to and fro in there. Surely that was a process that was in writing. Um, Senator, I'll take on notice and get back to you what, what, enga what, what interactions there were. Um. Did the department advise the minister or the minister's office of the draft findings or content? How wide did this go? Like, you know, when you got your report, how did it go to the minister's office? Uh, Senator, I'm not sure uh, the um, re draft report actually went to the minister's office. I wouldn't have thought so, but I would imagine that they, because the draft report actually went Well, I'll ask you on notice. Did it go to the minister's tick. office? Well, because it went through the tick process. The, um, uh, the final review went to yes. the minister. The draft review went to the peer reviews, <coughs> to state and territory officials, um, to, to make sure that the final governance review was actually considered to be um, a a report that accurately reflected um, the current state in Australia. Yeah. And responded and, to and the look, recommendation yes. six of the inquiry. So I'll, I'll just read this out. So did the, the department report. advise the minister or the minister's office of the draft findings or content? First question. And if so, who did the advising? Second question. And third question, on what date? And then finally, what response came from the minister's office and the committee, can the committee be furnished with that response? So, take that on notice. Very Senator. clear questions in a highly unusual set of circumstances. Yeah. And we do have many more questions, Senator Macdonald. We'll, we'll have to spill over sure just on this. But the hour has come, I think. I'm sure, they're all excellent questions. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> um, with that, I no, think no. we. Oh, cost. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. You've just Senator. taken that on notice, didn't you? No, no, the cost no. too. I was, I was trying to. I said if we could find it, we would find it, but I haven't got it in front of me, so I'm really sorry, Senator. You know, I just got to say, okay, but I mean, this is just highly, highly unprofessional, really. Seriously, if I was talking about secret drinks the Minister was having with mates in big business, I'd understand you protecting. Something as simple as important as this is absolutely disgraceful. And this, I tell you, honestly, the department under Mike Murdoch, we would have had the answer. So that concludes.